Hi there, I'm Melissa Nielsen with Waldorf Essentials and I wanted to sort of make this video today to talk to you about sort of how to have difficult conversations kind of on several levels. How do you, how do you approach your children in an age appropriate manner? And I also want to say I'm not perfect at it. I do my best. Um, I, I will share with you sort of what our family, um, you know, what we have done and how we have raised our children. And, um, and then also just sort of give you some insight as to what happens when they become teenagers and adults, which is a tricky space. So first I want to say that anything with regards to anti-racism has to begin at birth. It has to be something that is part of your family culture. So this is an opportunity to ask yourself, am I conscious about my choices? Am I conscious about, um, and to sort of go beyond all of um, you know, the upheaval that's going on right now, this is a, a larger topic about being conscious, about knowing why you do what you do. Um, and in, in this case specifically, who do you support? Are you um, aware of, the, the people that own the businesses that you that you frequent? Are you aware of your neighbors? Are you aware of your friends and their plights? Are you aware of ways that you can support those that are minorities, um, those that ha are black owned businesses, minority owned businesses? Are you aware of people around you? And often I think it's, it's, it can be hard, I think, as a white person to uh, be, especially if you're surrounded by other white people, to not sort of understand perspective. And I think it's very important to do the best you can because we will never know that their situation completely because we're not them. But I think it's very important to do the best you can to gain the best perspective you can. And that education process begins, like I said, at birth. It begins with really raising your yourself um, as you're sort of going into this parenting process to think about how you um, show up, how how you love, and because your children take every single every single step and prompting from you. So how are you showing up? How do you love? How do you love your neighbors? How do you, you know, what words come out of your mouth? What what things do you say, um, whether it be about another race, about another sex, about somebody who's of a, a different political party, um, about somebody who might be frustrating you? What words come out of your mouth? And and what in in what ways can you then improve? So so that would be like the base, right? The, the, um, the very beginning. And then you want to be conscious about how you're, you know, sort of bringing things to your children. So look at the books that you have in your children's bookcase. Do you only have books depicting white children? Do you have books that are multicultural? Do you discuss things that are multicultural? Do you discuss other people from um, you know, other ethnicities? Do you discuss people that live in other places? Do you have friends that are multicultural? One of the things that I have been so blessed with is that we created, when, when we lived in San Diego, we created a co-op, my co-leader and I, that was full of diversity, of people of all colors and all races, all creeds. And it was such a beautiful space for our children to really be able to just see that it's that love is is love and that it's normal and that it that's the way god intended and that that's that this is what we should do we should just love everybody it also gives us pause when we're in this um sort of space to question um at what point do we talk to our children about things like violence and brutality and um and i think you know i'm i'm 47 years old and my generation was often taught that you um, you trusted the police always. You trusted anybody in a uniform always, that they were always more trustworthy. You always went to them. And I remember being raised that way and not really questioning it until I was older and started to really sort of dive into my own intuition. 
And one of the things that I am teaching my children through meditation is to really stop and ask yourself, how do I feel? And if, if you're feeling funny, you're feeling scared, you're feeling um, nervous, ask yourself why you feel that way. So that you aren't put in a position to um, just trust somebody because you're supposed to. Um, when we first moved to San Diego, there was a whole bunch of um, crazy going on with regards to um, some police officers that were pulling over women and then requiring favors to get out of tickets and, and abusing them. And it was because there was a culture in the San Diego Police Department of sort of this abuse. And they had to eradicate that culture of that. So when I talk about culture, I, I ask you what culture is present in your home? How do you show up and how do you, um, how do you be with your children? How, you know, what things are you being conscious about? So then when it comes to these conversations, um, it should make it, uh, not easier to have the conversations, but it should make it a little more, um, a little less abrasive. So with your older children, I think it's very easy to have these conversations. The kinds of conversations we've been having now are, wow, our country has a really violent history. And it does. Whether it be all the way from the beginning, taking land away from people, bringing slaves to this country, to how do you integrate those slaves then into a country where people think that white, that being white is better, and then bringing other people into this country and becoming a melting pot. Like, wow, wow, we have to be aware, right? We have to look at it for what it, for what it is. And, and you can do that with an older child, especially a child that is 13 or older. They have such a different capacity than an eight-year-old does to really and truly see it for what it's worth. And often, I think you'll find, if you're having those conversations, especially with regards to your lessons in school, if you're having those conversations, they will come to you and they will say, what is going on? <laughs> why is it this way? Why, why, why has there been this horrible past? And then the inevitable next question is, how do you change that past? And how do you make it so that the future is better? And it comes back to love, how you show up. The more people that love and can show up in a space where they are um, trying to be understanding and give people the benefit of the doubt, be um, tolerant of others, understand other space, um, support one another. Uh, the more you can do that, the more you break down barriers and the more you build bridges. So how do you have that conversation with young ones? Because, you know, so we've been in this situation, not making this about me, just trying to explain how we've discussed things here, where our oldest son is still in San Diego. We have moved to um, Arizona. We just, we're still unpacking our house. Um, and our older son, oldest son was supposed to come and join us. And Eric was, is flying back on Thursday to get him. Our oldest son lives downtown San Diego and there's some scary stuff happening right now and he's been scared. <laughs> um, and, and that's, uh, as a mom, doesn't matter. It's really scary. So my heart goes out to anybody who, as a mom, is scared. You know, I, I, I can only imagine those who are scared for your children every day. I am so sorry. Because it's not fun at all. It's not what we sign up for as mothers, right? It's scary. But how do you have those difficult conversations with siblings and younger children? And sometimes you have to be honest. And um, the conversations that you have with the child that's nine and up, I think are vastly different than the ones that you have with younger ones. When they're younger, I try to keep it um, on a much more um, a level that's that's not quite as as honest. I mean, as honest as I can be without being scary. But there are things that are very scary right now, and um, and the best thing that I can tell them when they're that age is, mom and dad do our best every day to protect you and keep you safe, and um, and we want to keep you safe, and and sometimes. We have to have that conversation and that's why I really need you to listen to me when I say it's time to come. 
got to come. You have to listen to me because you have to stay by my side. Um, then as they're, you know, nine or nine or, or so and older, um, I think it's okay to have some really honest conversations. Not too much, but, you know, I will say that our nine-year-old knows. She knows about George. She knows about how he died. She knows that that it was a policeman that, that he died at the hands of. And she knows that some not all policemen are good and that some of them are tricky and that we have to use our intuition. We have to stop and, and ask ourselves, like, is what am I feeling? And why am I feeling this? Am I feeling this because I'm scared? Am I feeling this because I should run? Am I feeling this because I should fight? What should I do? And asking herself what she should do. Teaching our children to understand their intuition and to really feel it, I think is one of the most important things we can do. I think that um, when we examine those things, we examine why we're afraid, um, then you can have deeper conversations. Are you afraid because you truly do need to be aware? Um, or are you afraid because somebody is different from you? And, and that um, allows us then to break down that barrier. That's how you start having those conversations. I also want to say you can't stop having them. You have to continue to have those conversations regularly. You have to continue to put yourself in a situation to know others, to be friends with others. You know, I, I have to say we had this awesome neighbor when we first moved to San Diego. She used to call me her odd white friend. She used to say, you can ask me anything, little old odd white lady. She would just laugh at me often. But you want to have a friend that you can ask those crazy questions to. Now, I'm talking about crazy questions. I'm not talking about deep questions, but you definitely want to have the deep questions too. But you want to have a friend, many friends if possible, that are in your life for different reasons, that you connect with for different reasons, and that you are sort of stepping in there and just loving. And I could ask her things like, when you were a kid, was Jesus black? And she'd laugh at me and go, uh, no. <laughs> You know, dumb things. And then I would also have heart to hearts with her about her adult sons and how anytime there was a gunshot in the neighborhood, because um, we lived in a very colorful neighborhood, she always worried that they were coming after her boys. And I remember her sharing with me some very hard, hard situations. And she always worried about her boys. And they were adults. Um... But even when they were teens and all, you know, I, I, my heart goes out to you. And there's nothing I can do to make it better. And for somebody that's a cleric that likes to control things, that's really hard for me to know that I can't make it better. But what I can tell you is that I am doing my best to raise my children right. And my hope is that I can teach others to do the same. Keep questioning, keep asking, keep going, don't stop. Every day you're gonna mess up. Get up and try again. Your kids are gonna mess up. You're gonna be embarrassed. You're gonna be like, I'm so sorry, I have not, that is not what I meant. Um, and then you have to start over and you have the conversation again. You keep going because that's how this stops. You, you have to replace it with love and you have to replace it with education. You can't do anything else. My heart goes to you. Love.